In this lecture, we are going to know what is Deno. Deno is a simple, modern, and secure runtime environment for JavaScript and TypeScript that uses V8 Engine and build with Rust programming language. Like Node, it is used to build backend services or APIs, which are, they are called application programming interfaces, which are used in a web application, on the browser, or on mobile applications. Those are just serving what the user can see and interact. So they need the services to communicate to some database or sending an email or storing a file on the server. Maybe now someone will ask why we need to use this Deno if there is already Node.js and other programming languages to build the APIs or in bigger words why we need to use Deno from now. The answer for that is there is many features in Deno which are making it needed for the future. Let's see the answers about this in the next part. In this lecture, we are going to know why do we need Deno. Deno is actually a really easy to get started. You don't need prior knowledge or previous ABI builders. It's really great for prototyping and agile development. It also can be used to create super fast applications and highly reusable and scalable. It's saving so much time in development about 40% of fewer lines of code, 40% of fewer files, and also much faster in request speeds, and more faster in response time. And it's secure by default, no file or network or environment access unless you have to enable it. It has many built-in utilities like dependency inspector, Deno info, and also code formatter, Deno format or Deno FMT. And the most great feature that Deno is using TypeScript out of the box. If you already know TypeScript, then you can change your title directly from front-end developer to full-stack developer. Thanks to Deno that it uses all the same features and code base of TypeScript. It has also no package manager, so no big node module folder anymore. When you call the libraries which you need, they are directly cached on the file system. It minimizes also the core API size while providing a large standard library, which we will see in the next lectures with no any external dependency. Next, we are going to take a look to the architecture of Deno. In this lecture, we are going to know what is Deno architecture. As we saw before, Deno is like Node.js, a runtime environment for executing JavaScript code. Before Node.js and Deno, we use the JavaScript code to build applications which can run on the browsers. But now, the JavaScript code can run on more than a browser, using the same JavaScript engine which is called V8 engine. Ryan Dahl was able to do that in Node.js using C++ and now with Deno based on Rust. Next, we will see why Deno is different from Node.js. Here we come to the main question, why and where Deno is different from Node.js? Deno was announced almost two years ago by the Node.js original creator Ryan Dahl at JS Conference Europe. Every project manager must take decision. Ryan regretted some early decisions in Node. Today JavaScript is totally different language than what it was back in 2009 when Node started. Think about the modern ES6, 2016, 2017 features and so on. Finally Deno reached the version 1.0 1.0 should be released on May 13, 2020, the first release of Deno officially declared stable. Now the main question, will it replace Node? No, 
Node is a giant, well-established, incredibly well-supported technology that is going to stay for decades. The main difference between Node and Deno is that Deno has first-class TypeScript support as we mentioned before. Deno is written in Rust and TypeScript, two of the languages that today are really growing fast. In particular, being written in TypeScript means that we get a lot of benefits of TypeScript, even if we might choose to write our code in plain JavaScript. And running TypeScript code with Deno doesn't require a compilation step. Deno does that automatically for you. You are not forced to write in TypeScript, but the fact the core of Deno is written in TypeScript is a huge. This means that when we code in Visual Studio Code, for example, which is really a tight integration with TypeScript, since both of them are developed at Microsoft, we can get benefits like type checking and we write our code and advanced features. In other words, the editor can help us in a deeply useful way. Well, after this introduction, let's start installing the great Deno. In this lecture, I am going to show you how to install Deno. Installing Deno is very easy. We just need to go to the Deno website, which is called deno.land, and then we will find many ways for the installation. It's depending on your operating system. So for Mac, it's different, and for Windows, it's also different. And there are another terminals which are used, and you can install them also like Chocolaty or Homebrew. So I am going to use now the PowerShell method. So I am going, going to copy this uh, command here, Windows, and we will run it on PowerShell. PowerShell is included already with Windows, and I just copy the command here, and I start to install Deno. As we see here, we don't need any executable file to download and uh, install and permissions and etc. It's directly one command, you run it, and it's getting installed very easy on your machine. So now the installation is ready. It suggested us to run demo, deno help. So I'm going to run deno dash help. And then we see like documentation, some commands how to execute deno and other tools which we need. Let's check the deno version now, which we have. Nice, we have Deno 1.02, which is almost the second version after the first release. There are many commands included in Deno CLI, such as bundle and, for example, formatting the source files. Of course, there are also commands for running your program which you wrote in TypeScript. And also, there are some environment variables which you can see here to set. And also, you can set a proxy for your environment. There are many editors which support Deno or TypeScript. So I would prefer maybe to use uh, Visual Studio Code. It's very powerful. Of course, there are like Atom and Sublime, etc. Visual Studio Code can be installed from the website uh, code visualstudio.com and you can download which version which suitable for your operating system of course there are also many extensions we can can be installed with visual studio code uh, and they are always up to date let's install deno extensions we just go to this icon and type deno and we will find the installation the first one is from deno land and we click install it got installed. This extension actually it's adding Deno support for Visual Studio Code. So whenever you have a mistake in typing, it will correct you based on Deno rules. Let's quickly start now to initiate our application. First application, I'm going to create a directory uh, using PowerShell. Let's call it Hello Deno. And now I am going to be go inside this folder when you click tab it will give you autocomplete and of course we can open Visual Studio Code 
with code dot to open directly the folder inside Visual Studio Code. As we see here, the project is listed. Let's create a file, call it app.ts. The extension of TypeScript is ts. And let's start our first application, which we will see in the next lecture. All right, now we have the file application.ts, which we created in the last lecture. Inside this file, I am going to define a constant. I give it a name, greetings. This greetings will have a value, hello, deno. And like in JavaScript, I am going to console log this constant. And whenever I want to start the application of Deno, I'm going to save this file and I go directly to the terminal in the same folder and run Deno run app.ts, the file name, and we will see the result directly in the console. It has hello Deno. I'm going to give a type to this constant like a string and try to run the application again and it will work. But when I change this type to number and save it again and run, the compiler of TypeScript, it will give me error that it's, this value is not assigned to num number because it's a string. So in this way, we guarantee that Deno is doing all the compiling stuff, even it's running a TypeScript compiler. Okay, let's fix now our error. Put back the string value, string type, and save. And I am going now to figure out if Deno work with JavaScript. So let's create a file app.js and create a function. Let's give it a name also greeting and parameter name. And this function will console log for me the name with hello. Now I am going to call this function greetings, I will give it a parameter like deno and save the file and run it again. But I will say deno run app.js, not .ts and it works. So we figure out that deno also compiling and running JavaScript files, which is great feature. If you don't know TypeScript, you can write JavaScript.